So thanks to the local firefighters association for sending me the questionnaire uh, with the five questions. I'm going to try to answer those uh, with some video. I'll send you back a response uh, electronically as well. Um, you know, my name is Wesley Combs. Uh, I'm running for alderman. I'm not a politician. Um, but I guess if, I, if I'm in this election, I'm becoming a politician. Um, the first question is, what is my election plan and how do I plan to get elected? Um, so really, I'm separating myself from the rest of the aldermen because I am one of the most forward-looking, or what I would believe is one of the most forward-looking candidates because I spend a ton of time looking at the future, future technologies. Uh, my background is computer science, software, um, and then I've been an entrepreneur for, for 20 years. I built a business that's here in Kingsport. Um, that's got about 30 employees that, that are well-paying software development programming jobs. Um, so what I'm really hoping to do though is, is I'm gonna use traditional signage. You know, I think that's that's a key to any campaign um, that is, is signage getting your name out there because some of this is a, a marketing um, a ploy and it's really name brand recognition. So you'll definitely see Combs signage out there. Uh, my whole campaign, I, I did, came up with the concept of lift King Sport, which is really lean in and follow through. So lean into our problems and follow through on those solutions long term. I think that's uh, key to solving a lot of problems. Um, and I've I've got been blessed with great friends and, and really a network of people that are willing to put those signs out there. So that's one. Uh, number two is, is stuff like this uh, interaction through video and using social media platforms uh, where I can. Um, I don't have an unlimited budget. Uh, I do have a couple of people that have given me some money, um, but most of this is funded out of my pocket, which is totally fine. Um, so I will be using some social media as, as well as kind of we get further into the campaign, which I say, I mean, we got like six weeks left now. Um, so I'll be using Facebook and a lot of these videos that I record, uh, trying to get the word out more that way as well. And then I'm making all the appearances I'm invited to, uh, to speak to people and groups, because I think that's important um, to really kind of hone, hone in on the message. Um, but I am really the candidate for the future. I've got a background in business technology and I really like economics. Um, I spend a lot of time listening to podcasts and stuff, trying to figure out the next technology and kind of where to, where we could take it and apply it to Kingsport and our region or a business around here. Um, the second question uh, is if we endorse you, will you continue to meet with us even if we disagree on an issue? Sure, you know, I think uh, people disagree in life, it happens. And really it's where you, when you disagree, you know, somebody, you either just fundamentally, you know, positional negotiation um, or, or you're, uh, you're really negotiating and, and trying to see other people's perspective, right, or a point of view. Um, and so I think, you know, disagreements are a part of life. And, uh, you know, if, if those, I'm open to learn from disagreements. Um, and, and yeah, meet, meeting with people and, and learning their perspective and seeing things from other people's point of view, um, I think are an important thing in life. So obviously no problem there. I don't, I don't want to hold a grudge. I don't hold grudges and stuff like that. Um, what experience and or knowledge do you have in the area of public safety in the Kingsport Fire Department? Um, not a ton. I do know that first responders are very important, that those first few minutes of an accident or an incident or anything is really the time where you can make or break or save a life. I think that is very important. Um, and I know, you know, the firefighters do a lot more than fire, fire fires. I mean, you all are paramedics. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that, that, that occurs in that and a lot of training. I personally would love to go do the paramedic school because I've looked at, well, that's, that's, that was first few minutes, that's when you can save a life, you know, if you can stop the bleeding or any of that stuff. Um, that person might be there, you know, several days later, um, all because those first five minutes were the most important. Uh, so I think that is, is crucial. And then having obviously access to people um, when you're, when, when those emergencies happen, so distribution throughout the city and making sure there are clear causeways and, and or I say clear causeways, but you can respond quickly, um, I think is very, very important. Uh, most of my interaction with the, the fire department has been with the fire inspector. <laughs> I own a building on Center Street and he comes down super, always super friendly, uh, very helpful. And if we've got two surge protectors plugged into each other, then that's a problem. Um, we, we, we learned that early on um, and we have to have good fire extinguishers um, and make sure the, the, the exit signs are lit up. I mean, he, he kind of goes through all those, um, but that, that is most of my experience, fortunately. Uh, with that, I, in in times of an emergency, most of it is is you know they like my wife's been in a car wreck a long time ago. Uh, people show up then, um, you know, but most of it is is thankfully for me um, has been more on the uh, preventative maintenance side. Um, so, what makes me the best candidate for city mayor or, or alderman is what I'm running for. I kind of tied into that at the first of this, but really it's my vision for the future. Um, I like I said I. I listen to a lot of podcasts and I try to absorb information as fast as possible. I'll listen to those things at 2x and 3x speed, which sounds like a, uh, a, a mouse, you know, rattling in your ear or, or the chipmunks. 
Um, but really, that's the, you can absorb a lot of information that way. So I spent a lot of time doing that, and then I think about how we apply it to the world and remove existing s systems and structures and how we can replace that with uh, more efficient patterns or more efficient mechanism to, or techniques you know, with that technology. Uh, at the same time, a lot of that's tied to economics because funding everything is very, very important. Um, so, and then I've got a, a, I mean, I've written software for years. Uh, business and technology are kind of my things. I've, I've, I was an entrepreneur at age 12, uh, selling bubble blowers at Heritage Days down in Rogersville. Um, I grew up in this region, and so I've kind of, I mean, I've, I'm, I'm from here. I'm, I'm originally lived in Rogersville, but all my family was from Kingsport, and I've lived in John City as well. Uh, so I think, you know, it, you know, interacting with people and building strong ties around the other communities as well because regionalism is a real thing and we have to figure out how the Tri-Cities or Appalachian Highlands, whatever you want to call it, uh, works together and succeeds because it's really us versus other regions. Um, it's not us versus each other. Um, when one of us wins, we all win and we can't be taking stuff from each other. We need to be figuring out how we can grow the whole pie better. Um, and I, so I think that's important as well. And I've, I've, I've got friends in other cities. I mean, and I usually get along with people really well. Um, so I think that would make me a pretty big candidate. Um, and I'm going to bring a different perspective that others might not have, um, which pairs well with the perspectives they might have. And I think that diversity on your alderman and um, your board, I think is important. And I'm trying to bring a technology, business and healthcare vision to that, um, because I think those are important to our region. And I've got a lot of experience in all three of those uh, areas. Um, where do you see the city of Kingsport in the next five years? You know, this is this this question has probably changed for people over the past few months, even the past few weeks. It, it, I think the answer to this could change. Uh, you know, we're exiting a pandemic, and, and God willing, um, and and so Kingsport right now with the current administration's economic, uh, I mean, we're we're in a it's called modern monetary theory, MMT. Um, they are trying, we're in an economic uh, experiment is what we're in right now, where they're going to inject cash through policy, um, not, and they're not gonna control the economy through interest rates and, and those type of things. Um, so they're trying a different technique, which is injecting a lot of cash uh, in, into the system, whether we want to or not, really. Um, it's, it's not up to us. I mean, we're, that's, that's all happening in DC. So there's gonna be $2 trillion more than likely $2 trillion spent um, over the next few years, um, and maybe even faster than that, to, to basically inject as much money into society as possible. And the people that are going to capitalize on that the fastest, I think, uh, will come out the best in the end. Um, so right now, I look at the city of Kingsport is how do we get grant writers and write to, to capitalize on much as that cash as possible to upgrade the city. We have a hundred year old stuff underneath the roads, pipes, stuff like that. That's those are infrastructure projects that need to be done. Um, I know the city normally does them in a, you know, in a budgeted time, very debt conscious manner. Um, I think some of that thought process is going to have to be uh, abandoned because I don't think that, I mean, the government's going to want it spent fast. Um, and so I think we need to be ready to do that and try our best to spend it in a local economy with local people and local contractors, either building the source or, you know, workforce ourselves. Um, and, and people might end up moving here for that because we'll have so much job, so many jobs if we can secure as much of that funding as possible. Um, and really this is to kind of get, make sure our, we shore up our infrastructure, shore up our schools, and then really start to turn the city into the smart city of the future. With a smart city, that's, I mean, your, your roads are gonna talk to your cars. Uh, we're gonna end up with drones flying around. I mean, you know, are we building, uh, you know, are we building charging ports uh, for electric cars? Uh, you know, in 2019, gasoline hit its peak and now it's going down. Uh, so electric cars are gonna be the future. And at the same time, we need to rely on AEP. Are we gonna get, are they gonna upgrade their infrastructure to support all that charging capacity we need? Are we gonna do more solar? Um, I also think in the next five years, the city of Kingsport, you know, with Eastman's investment in the plastic recycling and Dom Tar building, uh, making boxes, redoing their plant to make boxes out of recycled cardboard, I think is what they're doing. Um, that, you know, that means any piece of cardboard that comes into Kingsport, hopefully ends up back in Dom Tar and gets recycled back into another piece of cardboard box that goes back out to somebody doing online retailing or whatever. And that box, you know, if it gets back in Kingsport, that box gets recycled. I mean, that would be the goal. Uh, same thing with plastics in Kingsport that they get recycled. So then we can basically claim eventually that we're one of the greenest cities in the world um, through our recycling and reuse efforts. Uh, and, and we do have the manufacturing and, and, uh, and the facilities doing that here. So I think those are great. Uh, great things for the city to tie on to, um, that we are agreeing. And we need to take care of our natural resources as, as well. We only get this earth once. Um, so I think we need to really tie into that um, and, and 
make full use of, of the work being done there. Um, so I think the city of Kingsport has the opportunity to really, really excel in the future. And, and it's happening now with the pan the pandemic just drove so much, um, but people are moving here in droves. And, and I think what we need to make sure is we, we keep the feel of Kingsport and keep a lot of that in place, but bring the modern uh, conveniences of life along with the reuse and the recycling. Um, and then we have to make sure we support education and all those things. We have good jobs and building our workforce out um, because I really do think that we've got a leg up on some other places. It's a beautiful place to live. Um, and, and I wanna make sure that you know we, we, we continue to keep that, um, but economically we start to compete uh, more again. And you know, people, they can work from home, so having a house here in Kingsport needs to be attainable. And you know, we have fast internet and all that stuff, stuff's gonna be required, and, and luckily we have a lot of it now, not too much choice, but maybe we can even change that. Um, but really making sure that, you know, Kingsport, so you wanna you know, live, work, and play here. Um, I think are all great things and it needs to be a really well balanced area. I don't think we want to turn it into a Manhattan or anything like that. I think that would be a, a mistake actually to, to turn it into something like that because we don't need any more of those. We need to keep some of the feel we've got, but we definitely need to be modern um, and, and convenient to those people looking for, for those uh, modern day conveniences in life. So, uh, but anyway, I want to you know thank you for giving me the opportunity to respond to this. Uh, I'll send the written stuff over, um, but and you know I would love to to meet with you because I think it mentions in here coming uh, next week or something to, to chat. Um, so happy to do that, and uh, and and thank you for all your service and everything you all do. I really do appreciate it. All right, thank you.